Andy Toth is up next. Who would you have liked to have wrestled during your career that you never got to, Tully? Um, I don't know that I did. I don't know that I missed anybody. You don't know there's, yeah, there's anybody that comes to your mind right away that says, no. man, I didn't get to wrestle him. Okay. No. Did you ever wrestle one-on-one -on -one against Harley? Um, no. Okay. I don't think so. Because I know I ref I know I refereed his matches, and uh, Harley was was a tremendous world champion and a tremendous uh, attribute for the business. Uh, but I did wrestle Terry. I did wrestle Dory. Mm. Uh, Dory Funk changed my career. Matter of fact, tell the story. And uh, we were we were doing an hour time limit in San Antonio, my hometown. I was the promoter's son and a young babyface wrestling for the NWA World Championship. I was over shape, uh, overweight, and I was out of shape. And at thirty minutes, with thirty minutes to go, the world champion is slapping me on top of the head saying, get up, kid, get up, kid. And I was, I got in shape very quickly and I was never out of shape ever again in my entire career. And there were a lot of guys, that, yeah. there were a lot of guys that were got very tired when I wasn't tired. Mm. <laughs> but Hey man, that was a life lesson. If you ever learned it right there, oh. it was a couple skull shots to the head and in your hometown. Yeah, right. <laughs> Let's speak about somebody else that's no dummy. Nimrod Greeny is here. Nimrod Greeny. I love some of these handles, by the way. Uh, could you go over a typical weekend loop in 1986? Travel, hotel, meals, matches. 86, red hot for Jim Crockett Promotions. What did a weekend look like for you, Telly, back then? Well, this is how it. a weekend started on Friday. And you wrestled somewhere in the United States. Normally, we would fly from that city to Atlanta because we had to be at the TV station at 10 in the morning. So you'd get in, you'd land at, at uh, the private airfield um, at around midnight, one o'clock in the morning, get four hours of sleep, get up jump in a taxi and go to the studio. Uh, the TV show would start at uh, about 10.30, 10.45. We would tape the two hour, the 6.05 show first. Then we would tape the 6.05, the Sunday show, which was one hour. And we'd finish around 2.30 in the afternoon, go immediately to the airport, mm -hmm. jump on a plane, fly wherever we needed to uh, to wrestle on Saturday night. Then we would get up Sunday morning. After like three hours of sleep, probably. And <laughs> we always had a double shot on Sunday, had a two o'clock show someplace. And then we would have a eight o'clock show somewhere else. And then you would be finished for the weekend. What a, and that was, you probably say, the entire year, if not a few years there, 85, 80 through 87. Oh, yeah. That was your life. Yeah. Wow. And, we taped the, and we taped the syndicated show on Tuesday, and that was two hours of taping, plus sometimes you wrestled on the live match that helped draw the crowd for the TV taping. And you wrestled, you only had to wrestle once on Mondays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and then you'd start over. And then it all start over again. Oh, it, the, the people nowadays don't have a clue. Yeah. Not a clue. And I wrestled, and, and I love my daughter immensely, and uh, she's down in Mexico City doing, getting ready for the, the shows this weekend. And, uh, but she did make a comment to me the other day, 
And uh, Tessa, if you're hearing this, I love you. But she needed a vacation because she wrestled 14 days. <laughs> she needed a week off. <laughs> and I had no comment. I love it. <laughs> oh, man, so good. Yes, Tessa, I got to talk to her a little bit too today. And uh, big fan of her work. And so there you go. Shout out to Tessa if you are watching. We got a couple super chats. So I'm going to jump to those first. Uh, Instagram Wrestling Historian says, how did your ECW debut come about? Thank you. ECW. Ooh. <clears throat> I don't remember how it came about, but they asked me to come up there and wrestle. And uh, my first match was against, um, oh, what is his name? Now, this is the bad thing about getting old. I know, That's right? I wish I could help him. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, got blonde hair. Shane Douglas? <laughs> Shane Douglas. There you go. <laughs> and it was an hour time limit match. And Shane should have always been a babyface. He was a fantastic babyface. He was so handsome. And, and he always wanted to be a heel. So we had an hour match in Philadelphia and the first 30 minutes was good. And the last 30 minutes were probably not so good. And, and there you have it. it. There it is. <laughs> now listen, he did have the baby face look, but when he became the franchise in ECW, I don't know if you continue to follow his work and he threw the NWA title on the ground and really just ripped it on the mic. He did become an excellent heel though. So just saying. Well, good. Yeah, I yeah. saw I saw him uh, somewhere a few months ago. Okay, Arn and I went to the gym and saw him at the uh, at the show that day. Very, show. Yeah, yeah, he's on the circuit for sure. He's doing his thing, and he's using sometimes yeah. Francine and and others. But uh, Darren Staley's our next super chat. Here we go. I'm gonna throw it on the screen. He said, when the Tully Magnum show happens, see, I already teased it, so he's all for it. Can we slow the I Quit tape down like it's the Zapruder film with sound experts involved? And he said, I personally know a linguist. So he is all about digging into this whole I did not say I quit thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you exactly what I said was yes. <laughs> and it wasn't. I mean, we, we did advertising for a month beforehand that you must say I quit to lose. It wasn't a yes match. It wasn't a yes match. <laughs> it, it was it was an I quit match. <laughs> now, now, hey, listen, that's your homework, everybody. Before we do the Magnum and, and, and Tully uh, show, you need to go back and let's watch it. Let's all turn up our TVs. Most of us have surround sound at this point. Crank, crank it up, and let's really see if we can. Get okay. It also, they all everybody has to go buy the I Quit action figures. Mine's pre-ordered from Powertown Wrestling. Come on, those things are sweet, Tolly. They did a wonderful job on those action figures. We'll put them over right here. Power Town Wrestling, the I Quit duo of Tully and Magnum TA in a package. First together. time ever. Amazing work. Looks fantastic. So cool to see you and an, as an action figure. Liam Evans, another one true sport member. Hey, Tully, have you ever been to the UK much? If so, do you have any fun travel stories of the UK? I have never been to the UK. When when trips to Japan and and around the country, our schedules were so jammed in the United States and Canada that that we never we never got to, I never got to travel to Europe or any place else. I've only gone to Japan one time mm. and uh, wrestled one match. How was that flight? It was long from Detroit, and uh, 
I wrestled um, uh, I'll think of his name here in just a minute but okay. it was his retirement match and Fujinami okay have you ever wrestled Muda I saw that question in the chat do you remember wrestling great Muda at all I don't think so I, I, I think we have a, uh, a, 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 at least I checked. Yeah, he's here. My research guy, the host of Medusa paving the way. Andrew, you can validate for that for me. Let's find yeah, out. Yeah, because I don't, I don't remember. Because a lot of those guys uh, that would come over from, from other promotions and stuff, they were, if I remember right, they put them in as heels. And so they wouldn't have wrestled any of us. Makes sense. Heel on heel doesn't work. Darren Stanley no. wants to know if there's a link for the for the figures. They're sold out. The, the priests. I'm sure at some point they're gonna kind of reannounce another. But the the T A uh, Tully duo action figures. The pre order sold out, man. You think you have fans or what? It's sold out in 2024. <laughs> Depends on how many they make. <laughs> they they made 15, did. 20, but buddy, they sold my hotcakes. <laughs> <laughs> CB says, if I was a wrestler today, I would still ask Tully's advice. Uh, Fleur Family Channel, it's very kind of you. Tully, what is your relationship nowadays with the other four horsemen? We just talked about how you're, you know, on making the, the Comic-Con, you know, you've showed up at some tables and, and done some signings with, with Arnim Barry and JJ. How yeah. what's it like when you get to see those guys? Uh it it is very um good you know i mean everybody is older and different things and life situations have uh affected everybody sure. and uh you know you you don't get in you don't have time to get in a depth conversation because you've got fans coming up and always have a <laughs> line color stand up picture but you're you know it is uh but it's great to see those guys um because we the wrestling fans got to see it from a different perspective but again we got to see it and it was our job to generate those reactions and we're the guys that did the stuff and we're the guys now Arn a number of years ago had to have his neck operated on. I probably should be operated on in my lower back, but I'm too stubborn. Something like that. I'm <laughs> <laughs> take an Advil and go play golf. <laughs> And, uh, you know, but, but, you know, and Barry had, uh, that, that thing where he stumbled and, and fell down and, and yeah, thankfully there the was plane. someone there to help him. Mm. And it was, you know, th those kinds of things, your, our bodies were not made to go through that kind of stuff.